last week I had a chance to read the newly completed seismic design guidelines for tall buildings that was developed by the Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center in the U.S. And I found the standard very comprehensive, but it doesn't really tell you how the values were derived. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to discuss and give you a better understanding on how the values in the standards were derived. First of all, if you think that standards are there to guarantee the safety of your structure, then I should say it's wrong. Standards are there to enhance the safety, but there is no 100% guarantee that it's safe. And this is really true for seismic design of structures. This is because earthquakes are really unpredictable, the seismic motions are highly variable, and the best way to analyze the seismic motions is through the risk-based approach or the probabilistic approach. Now, what do we need to do with these standards? I should say that rather than memorizing the values, we should try to understand why these values are to be used. So, in order for us to know that we have a good understanding of the standards, then we should be able to answer the question of what are the values, why we are using this value, and how to obtain this value. In the field of earthquake engineering, the occurrence of earthquakes is usually done by assuming the Poisson process model. This Poisson process model assumes that events are discrete and that there is no overlapping of events, which is true for earthquakes because at a given time, for a given location, only one earthquake can occur. However, the biggest reason why this Poisson process model is very popular is because it only needs one parameter. Unlike other distribution models, Poisson process model is very convenient in the sense that you only need one parameter, which is the average occurrence rate. The equation of Poisson distribution is given here. This equation means that, that the probability that there are n events in x time is given in this expression. The n here means the number of events. X is the life of the structure and T is the recurrence period or return period of earthquake. Then the probability that there is no event can be calculated by assuming N is equal to zero. So if you substitute N here, then this expression will be simplified into this one, which is a very convenient equation. Now, the probability that there is at least one event is given by this equation 1 minus the probability that there is no event or this equation talking about seismic design well standards give you a specified return period for different earthquakes of different intensities now, this return period is actually the average return period, not the exact return period, so it could be longer or shorter than what is specified in the standard. Now, I'm very sure that engineers are very familiar with these values, that there are, I mean, the standard specifies that for ECLE, it's 43 years return period. For DBE, 475 years return period. And for NCE, 2,475. Now, if I'm going to ask you, why did the standard set these values? I'm not sure if you can answer this. If I'm going to ask you, how did the standard get these values? I'm sure that majority of the engineers are not familiar with or may not be able to answer this question. Now, in this video tutorial, I'm going to give the explanation on how these values will arrive and how to get these values. In this video tutorial, I'm going to derive and explain to you 
how these 475 years were obtained. Actually, the intention of the, of the standard in giving these 475 years return period is to predict a seismic intensity with a 10% chance of being exceeded in 50 years. Then, using the Poisson model that I explained to you in the earlier slides, um, the probability that there is no event is given in this equation wherein x is the life of structure and t is the average recurrence or return period. And since the probability of exceedance is equal to 1 minus probability of no exceedance, then the probability of exceedance is given in this equation. Now, talking about 10% chance of being exceeded, this means that the probability of exceedance is 0.10, which is 10%. And then the life of the structures is x, which is 50 years. So the equation becomes this one. And if you observe, the only remaining unknown is the t, which is the recurrence period or return period. Then if you solve t, then you will get 475 years. And this is how to obtain this 475 years return period. In layman's term, the probability of exceedance is called as risk and that the reliability is a function of risk given in this equation. If you have an earthquake with a return period of 475 years, then the equation is given here in if you want the risk and if you want the reliability, then this is the equation. What this means is that if you designate the life of your structure, then you can calculate the reliability and subsequently you can calculate the risk. Now the equation here is actually my favorite because this is the general equation for seismic hazard. There are three parameters here, the risk, the life of the structure, and the return period. Or if you want the reliability approach, then reliability and then x is the life of the structure and t is the um, return period. What this means is that if you can specify any two parameters, then you can calculate the other or the third parameter. So usually you have the life of your structure and you want to designate the reliability of your structure, then you can calculate what is the recurrence period of the earthquake you need to design. Going back to the seismic hazard analysis module of Frame CE, if I'm going to analyze the seismic hazard of Ormoc City, for example, and what you see is, is this curve and this curve. Well, this curve is for the peak ground acceleration, and this curve is for the peak ground velocity. Now you can see three values here, 188 and 333 and 452. This 188 is the seismic hazard corresponding to 43 year return period which is specified by the standard. And this 333 is the seismic hazard in terms of PGE corresponding to 475 years return period and this 452 is the seismic hazard corresponding to 2450 year return period which is also the um, I mean specified by standard now what is shown here is the design PGE if your design life is 100 years and the reliability is 95%. And this is using the general equation. 
whereas these three values use the equation for um, the return period specified by the standard. Now have a look. If I change this design life to 50 years and reliability of 90% calculate, then what you will see is that the design peak ground acceleration is 333 which is exactly what is being shown here and this is because I had mentioned in my previous slides that this 475 year return period is actually um, a, a structure with a design life of 50 years with a reliability of 90% so you can see that using the general equation you can still get the values uh, nominated by the standard and this shows the versatility uh, using the seismic hazard analysis of frame CE so whether you want the standard you can use this or you want the general equation then you can use this